On my hand here is the highest megapixel full frame camera at a point that this video was created. This is a review on the Sony A7R4. Hello everyone, welcome to ZP Productions. I'm Richard and today will be a review on the Sony A7R4. Before I start, I'd like to thank Sony Singapore and SR Revolution for providing me this test copy. And to say, this is a review of the Sony A7R4. However, this review will be short and you know, due to this uh, global climate now, I really can't uh, utilize this camera fully. Normally when I do reviews, I do like five shoots before I talk about it. And for this, I only limited to about, I'd say two and a half. Why? Because one was really last minute. And um, that is as much as I can talk about because I don't foresee myself going out, taking more photos with this camera anytime soon. But that being said, I have quite a lot of insights when I use this camera and I would like to share with you in this review here. As with all my reviews, I normally split into three parts. Firstly, build and handling, and that includes battery also. And then next, I will talk about uh, image quality. And lastly, I will talk about performance, which includes autofocus. Now, let's first talk about build and you know handling itself. So if you ask me this camera, one of the greatest improvement straight away is handling. And let me show you what. So how I shoot photos as a portrait photographer is like this. I'll take my camera to the eye. Okay, great. Now look left, look right. Okay, hold your pose there. Three, two, one, go. Now this is how I direct my models because using my left hand, I could tell my models to move left and right, look where I want before my, cam my hand moves back to the camera, hold it and take a stable shot. This is important and this requires the most important factor on the camera, which is great way to grip a camera safely. Now I can do this with my JFX100, I can do this with my EOS R, but I couldn't do this with earlier generations of the Sony A7 series comfortably. Why do I say that? Because the new A7R4 grip just feels better. It feels deeper and the groove here is also better cut off so that it can rest on my finger without worrying this camera slipping. Now, some people may say, hey, this camera is so light. Are you just weak? But you know, it's a 1.5 kg and if I don't use a GM lens like the GM85, I use a Sigma 85 or say I use the 105 or 135, those are heavy monsters. The body may be light, but the lenses are heavy. And together, they may weigh up to 2 kg, 2.2 kg. And therefore, a, a good grip is very important because I just need a few seconds to direct my models and then take the shot. So handling the grip was a marked improvement, at least for me. That being said, I just want to put a disclaimer, I didn't use the A7R3 very, very much, but I used the A7R2 and R1 quite a bit because I loaned it for my friend for about two shoots. So this is my take, at least for handling. The next thing I would say as to me was a significant improvement was the battery life. But the A7R3, I'm not too sure because I only use it for half a shoot, but the R4 battery life versus the R2 and R1 are a marked improvement. I could easily do about maybe four shoots because I do about an hour a shoot with one battery. So I would say as if the battery lasts an hour probably takes off 14% to 15% of the battery. Don't forget that this is a mirrorless camera, so it is perpetually on. So having a long battery life is very important. That being said, if you want to compare the GFX100 with two batteries, probably performs slightly better than the A7R4 with one. That is a marked improvement. And then uh, carrying on about build and, and handling, I would say as the buttons itself, I think that the buttons on the A7R4 are slightly better. They are well elevated, so you can actually use your finger to touch them. They are not too squishy that you can accidentally press them. They require a bit of effort, but overall they feel good. They feel premium. Now versus like the GFX100, but the buttons, uh, those buttons felt a bit small and not so nice to press, and these buttons are definitely better. I would say as a, in terms of general button placement and trying to find a button to press, this AR4 does a good job. The only issue is that this is a really small body. Look at the image I have of this camera. It's a small body and everything is cramped together. And the thing is, once you put your hands there, you really can't move anywhere else. There's only one way to grip it and that's pretty much it because it is a small camera. 
and it's really smaller than most of its competitors in terms of size and weight. But that being said, Sony did a good job. A lot of nice customizable buttons and you know five dials to even control how you operate the camera. So everything is great so far for building and build and handling. The only thing that actually, if you ask me, uh, as a portrait photographer that I found not so great was the tilt screen. And that is for two things. Firstly, touch here wasn't great. Uh, now, the latest patch will probably improve it. I have not tried it yet. Touch wasn't great when I was reviewing this camera. And the next thing was that the tilt. So the tilt was the very old fashioned type, only pull out, tilt up, tilt down. That is great if you are landscapist. But as a portrait photographer these days, if you, especially if you use a short tally or longer tally like 135, you want to shoot at waist level to make sure your model looks straight. And if you have really long lenses like 135 or 200, you may even want to shoot from bottom up, especially if your model is tall. It gives you a very nice effect when it comes to you know if your models are wearing heel and they are slim and tall. And this camera, because it doesn't have a flip up screen, for the portrait mode, uh, unlike a lot of other makers, I have to guess my shot or do the very traditional prone on the ground way of shooting. Now let's hope that you know this improves and Sony gives us a flip up screen for portrait mode. But if not, that is my only complaint about build. And it's not even really a complaint because it's just my use case of a portrait photographer. So the next thing I would like to talk about is image quality and uh, image quality for this camera I would say is great now Sony if you look at the marketing material this is marketed to be very similar to medium format and they have a reason to do it because this camera is 61 megapixels compared to this camera here this is the GFX 50 with a lens and this guy has 50 megapixels so medium format is well known to have a few things Firstly, very nice colors. Secondly, better dynamic range. And third, it has high resolution because you know it has a sensor that is bigger. However, the A7 Alpha pretty much does everything through technology. Firstly, it has a 61 megapixel sensor. This is more sensor megapixels than the GFX50. It loses to the GFX100. Secondly, it has a very, very new advanced sensor that, you know, if you calculate its dynamic range, it is very, very close. And if you look at photos to photo, it shows you how close they are to the old GFX 50, probably like two, like one third of a stop difference, which you may not be able to tell the difference. And then in terms of color, Sony has improved the color signs in the recent years. And if you are a raw editor like me, you probably can't tell a difference. And really, it all boils down to your lens after that. So I would say yes, Sony has a reason to call this as similar to medium format quality because if you compare to a medium format two to three years ago or maybe four years ago, this is probably as good as it gets even for a medium format then. Maybe unless you compare to the Face 100 or the Hasselblad 100 or the Face 150 because those sensors are two and a half times or three times bigger than this full frame sensor versus you know the small MF that is only about 70% larger. However, if you compare with the latest GFX100 um, sensor itself, you look at this side by side comparison, the GFX100 seems to produce slightly less noise, just really slight. And uh, if you ask me, that is not the biggest deal, but it's because it's 100 megapixels, sizing down will even reduce the noise further. And therefore, the GFX100 may have advantage as long as you do extreme shadow lifting because of its 100 megapixels advantage itself. However, when it comes to resolution, there is almost no difference. Look at this 5.6 shot in the center at the side versus the JFX 100. I really can't tell the difference itself. The difference is because the JFX 100 has more megapixels, but at the pixel level, the resolution seems to be about the same. It shows that the lenses today with some stop down can resolve any amount of megapixels at least till 61. Maybe in the future where a 100 megapixel full frame sensor comes out, we may see some drop and that is where the, the medium format will be better again. 
So if you ask me in terms of resolution, it is about the same. In terms of dynamic range with the advanced sensor, it only loses to the most advanced medium format cameras. So Sony has a reason to call this medium format image quality or something similar to it. Now, if we look at it from a portrait photographer's point of view, this is still really good. If you look at the shots I take, even in adverse conditions, no reflector, you know, just basing on ambient environment lights, these guys still take fantastic image with really easy to edit raw files. I would say as, uh, the raw files are slightly easier to edit than the EOS R, to me at least. Um, produce me really nice skin tones and good way to pull my highlights and shadows to give me a nice image overall. Take a look at some of the photos I take for portrait itself and really I think this camera is fantastic when it comes to doing portraiture. And with 61 megapixel, you can crop. So the biggest reason why we want high resolution is not to print huge, but it's to give us a little, a little bit of leeway while post-processing. From a full body, we can choose to go half body. And from half body, we can choose to go close-ups. And that is the advantage of having high amount of megapixels. But that being said, the A7R4 ultimately, you know, is dependent on the lens itself. And I would say at, the, at least the GM85 is definitely not the world's sharpest lens today wide open. If you, if you have seen my other video, I can link the link above. The GM85 sadly wide open is not the greatest lens. That is not a big deal because stopping it down one stop will definitely produce you quality that out resolves this sensor so it looks like it can resolve slightly more than 61 so you know it would be nice if uh, Sony releases more new lenses to really maximize this 61 megapixel sensor itself like example the newest 135 which is fantastic moving on after image quality I'd like to talk about performance and if you ask me this is where the true medium format slayer thingy or should I say the medium format killer really comes to life so we talk about performance now now why is performance the biggest deal if you ask me because it is really really hard to get an absolute tech sharp photo at 61 megapixels I came from a GFX 50s and I can tell you that it's not trivial in every way from things like shake to you know shutter shock to model moving to your photo autofocus everything can just affect your shot to just give you a slight softness and uh, as i say again this kind of thing and somebody pointed out in the in the facebook pages on social media you really can't tell but when you are editing it it does make a difference and when you look at the image zoom out it gives you a slight pop if everything is well and sharp and contrasty if something is slightly off, it just feels off. It just feels weird, even though it's small. And the that is where I felt the A7R4 was really fantastic, even compared to every single full-frame camera I tried so far, except the A92. The other focus on the A7R4 is phenomenal. Uh, why I call it phenomenal? As long as you see the box on the eye, and on the right eye, I mean, you take a shot, it is about 90% chance to be tech sharp. And this tech sharp comes upon with autofocus and the things that Sony does it really well at continuous autofocus compared to the other makers. And not only that, it also comes because it has IBIS, which allows you to dampen you know, your, your shutter shock and dampen your camera movement. Because with an 85 mm lens and 61 megapixel, you buy right based on my calculation with my GFX 50 in the past, you need a shutter over 100 or 1 to 300. And not all the time do you get such shutter. So really, the sharpness comes about because of the IBs, the continuous autofocus that is great, the face detect that is fantastic, and it's really fast, really quick. This is something that I would say no other maker is there yet. Except maybe, you know, I see Jared Pollen's video. I think the 1DX Mark III was fantastic at least the way he shows it but if not the a7r4 is the leader of the pack and with this 61 megapixel it demands that kind of performance at least in autofocus and the thing about speed next this camera shoots really really fast and uh, the buffer is deep enough that you can keep pressing your shutter pressing your shutter pressing your shutter in a portrait shoot without requiring your model to stop 
The thing is, only weakness I feel, I, I feel about this performance thing is that it still uses the UHS SD cards and if you shoot fast enough, you may fill it up. Maybe not for a portrait session, but definitely if you shoot like spinning shots, running shots, it does make a difference and you, you, can literally, you can literally see the buffer clearing and that is a bit jarring to the overall performance of this A7R4. And uh, other than that, there's really nothing to complain. It is a really fast camera, it's quick to react, it focuses really quick. The performance of the autofocus is fantastic. In fact, for my three shoots, I probably use the joystick less than 30% of the time. The other 70% is on face detect. In fact, look at this photo here. I can tell you that this was shot while telling the model go, going, let's move it quick, go, 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 next, 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 next. I literally have no time to change autofocus because the model is just shifting and moving as fast as she can and I just take the shot. Uh, that was a bright sunny day so I have like one to 4,000 shutter. It's about, uh, so I can freeze any motion, I just need her to move fast and I was really testing the camera out. And in that test itself, 70% was usable while 50% was tech sharp. The other 30% was not usable due to various reasons like the model turned too far away, hair is blocking the eye, what's not. And don't forget that those shots are done at half body or three quarter body with an 85mm lens. So I'm standing really close and the lens is moving extremely quick. I think this is the only system that have that kind of performance. And therefore to resolve a 61 megapixel shot, I think the A7R4 is the best bet. So overall, my thoughts, you know, the performance is great. Fast, quick, definitely one of the best performing camera in the market today. So why did I buy it? Now, if you look at a uh, camera, it's about the entire system. And I would say uh, so far at least in terms of Sony lenses, I have not used or seen a lens that I crave for. Because camera can change and with the EOS R5 coming, you no, know, I don't know when the GFX 200 or 150 will ever come. But camera changes, however optics don't. A lot of the optics in the market today last for a decade or at least like eight years before they are refreshed in any way. So to me, choosing a system is all about the glass. And at least the Sony system do not provide me any glass that I felt a craving for. And that's about it why I didn't buy the Sony. But if you are a Sony user or you just want a camera to work or you just need the highest performance camera that can give you high resolution shot without much effort, I think the A7R4 is the camera for you. It's definitely the easier camera to use than my GFX100. Produces a 61 megapixel file that is fantastic. Now, talking about that, there is one thing I want to highlight. For some reason, Sony is weird. They go for either uncompressed RAW or lossy compressed RAW. Now, thinking lossy compressed RAW sounds bad, though some people say it doesn't matter, but a lot of people who actually analyze it deeply, there is some loss in quality. Whether, have, whether will you meet it or not, you do not know, I do not know. But why do they have not a lossless RAW, nobody knows. And the, loss, and the RAW itself, the uncompressed RAW is just huge, 100 of meg per shot. I think that's something that Sony could easily fix with firmware. So let's hope that maybe the ACM R5 will have a compressed lossless RAW. That is about it and that's the only improvement I can think of for this camera at least now. So this is pretty much my review of the A7R4. I try to keep it short because I really cannot shoot much so I only have like maybe 10 to 15 shots to show you guys. So what I'm going to do after this review is reviewing something else and that is this guy here. This is the GFX lens. This is the GF45-200. I think this lens is fantastic. Um, this lens itself has a nice range of I think 37mm to 80mm and I thought this range after I use it was more logical for a portrait shooter than the 2870 or 2470s because having 80mm brings you really really close to short telephotos. In fact, if you ask me, the, more, the most optimal range is like 35 to 100mm. I do not know why no makers made a 35 to 100mm f 2.8 let's hope that it will come out you know sony maybe you can try it or if not canon is coming at 7135 i don't know there's a rumor yet maybe it'll come up maybe or not i do not know so this guy will be our next review if not i hope you enjoy this video if you have any questions 
do post them below. I will answer it because you know I don't really have that much questions to start with. <laughs> and then do like and subscribe. Enjoy my videos. See you next time. Bye-bye.